Welcome everyone to my chess stream. It's Friday morning, last time I checked. And we're going to be doing Blitz and Classical Chess here on my stream. International Master Sparkle Horse. Emphasis on the horse part. <laughs> oh, I kill myself. Anyway, we are going to be playing anything between 5 plus 3 and 7 plus 3. So... If you guys uh, want to challenge me, we'll take the subscribers first. Had a couple subscriptions over the last couple days. I want to update something here. I almost forgot about. Oh man, the Twitch page is so hard to navigate. Where is my arrow to move up and down the screen? There it is. All right. <clears throat> anyway, guys, thanks for, for supporting the stream with... Um, with donations and um, also with uh, subscriptions here on Twitch. I'd like to thank you guys. We're on our way to trying to buy a new mouse. And I got a donation on PayPal. I want to thank you guys for that. Martin donated on PayPal. Um, we've got two new subscribers since the other day, since yesterday, or since Sunday, actually. So that's cool. Troll on a roll. It was a good stream yesterday. We had a really good subscriber stream with a lot of constructive analysis. I thought more analysis than Blitz and Classical Chess, which was kind of what I was hoping when I started doing the subscriber streams. Um, Usually, you know, it's been a lot a lot more blitz than, than really analyzing anything. I thought yesterday was a little bit more focused on, on analyzing positions in games. So that's cool. What's up, guys? We've got a challenge from Troll, of course. Good to see um, Gladys Troll, Arsenal fan, Clash Kid here early. And um, Mersato said, what's up? <clears throat> so... I'll probably start with the game against Troll in a Roll. I like how there's a challenge on the challenge board. Kissy girl. <laughs> like, what are the chances that's actually a female? Um, I don't think so. So, Troll on a Roll, 1666, the lucky rating. We were playing Chess 960 with Troll, almost like the first game of every stream. He's here on time. You know, I admire that. <clears throat> in a person troll or a troll early is on time on time is late and late is inexcusable 0.5% chance I think that's kind of a high estimate um, all right so I don't know trolls been getting good positions out of these chest 960 openings lately are you doing some kind of like opening trainer somewhere troll on chest 960 just 960 opening trainer on some secret website. Yesterday he just like, he just snuck a pawn on me like right right away on move one with a queen check, which uh, it was the first game of the stream. I wasn't really paying attention and uh, I just dropped my h7 pawn. I had a little bit of compensation, but um, let's be a little more careful here. Of course I'm white, so accidents are less likely to occur. I do like to play one or two chess 960 games. I don't want to play a lot of games chess 960. But, um, girls don't like chess. I think it's a cultural, you know, we, we've, we've made chess like many things into a male dominated, um, <clears throat> male dominated sport. I mean, it's been that way since the get go and it's slowly eroding, but, um, there's still not enough women in chess and I'd like to encourage them to play, uh, rather than discourage them. And, uh. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm just making an offhand comment about people pretending to be what they're not on the internet. Anyway, um, we are not sure what to do. I mean, I'm playing a lot of like G3 type of moves. It always seems like we have a bishop on H1 or A1. And this is just a safe default move I can make. I'm always afraid to move my central pawn because my central pawns because uh, like, okay, I mean, in a normal chess, you've got a queen on D1 supporting D4. Here, that's not the case. I could play e4. But the thing is, I mean, you're looking at e4 and you're thinking, okay, I can play e4. And then it's like, well, then my bishop is blocked by the by the pawn on e4. So. <clears throat> I 
Have you guys seen the DeepMind Alpha Zero thing? Well, we talked, they were talking about it a lot yesterday, Clash Kid. And, um, I don't have that, I don't know that much about it. Um, you know, I saw an article on BBC about it, and I looked at a couple of the games. But, um, you know, I just definitely need to learn more about it. And I was mentioning on the stream last night how one of the, one of the people on the paper, um, who, who published this whatever, um, paper and analysis, um, is Darshan Kumaram, which was a really strong, uh, young player in the UK. So he's on the team apparently in London with the Google AI. Um, this guy is a really good player. He was close to 2,500 FIDE back in like 1993. And I guess he just stopped playing chess before he became a GM. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting. You know, a name that uh, most people wouldn't pick up just looks like another name on the list of authors there or whatever. But the guy's actually an extremely strong player. So <clears throat> the Google AI, well, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I'm not sure if, if chess is as interesting to them as, say, like Go was. They made a big deal about... Um, they made a big deal about the Go match. But maybe chess chess is already um chess is already beaten down, I don't know. It's already been proven that chess is defeated by computers. Now we're we're taking out other chess computers. I'm not sure that's really interesting enough for them to to make a huge production about. Um anyway guys, just waking up here. I sound a little bit bad, <clears throat> but I'm not that sick. Okay, let's just play it safe here. I'm going to play a kind of closed structure. Got to watch the bishop on the long diagonal. I think that chess 960 lends itself to... Uh, lends itself to closed positions more than normal chess. <clears throat> um, I don't think they will publish the engine. I mean, it's, it's fine. You know, everyone's saying how, like, they don't have any real... There's no real information about, like, under what conditions they held this match between Stockfish and, and Google. And, I mean, you know, it is kind of like... Did one of the guys just, like, play it on his home machine or something? Or what what conditions were, were these two engines playing each other? Is it is it open knowledge or not? You know, that's what I want to know. Um, was it a fair match? Was it, you know, these two two machines with equal on equal terms or you know do you even call the google ai what do you call it it's a machine right bold knight c1 c1 to h6 no the bishop's on its normal square my problem is that i'm oftentimes like forgetting that my pieces aren't where they're supposed to be the biggest culprit is like thinking my queen is on d1 when it's not there I feel like if I castle queenside, I'm castling, you know, into his strong side. <clears throat> but in the meantime, I have a lot of pieces to get out of the way. And that's making life a little bit tricky here. Of course, he has the same problem. Kind of not as, not as big a problem, actually. I mean, if you look at it like, okay, he could have played c5 last move, which is probably what I would play. Turning it into a Sicilian... And then playing knight c6 with better a better anchor at d4. Um, it's not essential though. He still has good control of the center. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm just playing like it's a closed Sicilian. <clears throat> I thought so, Mercado, um, Marisado. Uh, like yeah, that's why I said like the bishop. <laughs> is on its normal starting square. So anyway, I've got a stream today this morning. We're gonna stream till two and a half hours goes past and um, then I'm off tomorrow, I've gotta to play. And Sunday I'm playing another team game in the morning and I'll probably do the sim do my weekly simul on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. hopefully on Sunday. 
Troll playing, uh, you know, this is an absolutely good move. It's not essential. <clears throat> he didn't have to play it straight up, but I think f5 is a good move. He could just leave his king on the queen side, castle queen side. I think that's that's fine. Whereas my king really, as I said, I think it feels more natural to be on like the king's side in this kind of king's Indian or close Sicilian type of structure. I feel like my pieces are sort of tripping over each other here a bit. And c3 is very weakening. He's also opening up his queen on this diagonal. I just really am not sure. <clears throat> I could give up my central pawn and take on f5. It seems like a pretty serious concession. Trolls play in the opening in chess 960. Excellent. How long does the tournament last? Will there be streams in the Christmas holidays? Yeah, it's going to last until the 20, 21st. Um, my tournament is till the 21st. So, let's see. What's the 22nd? Yeah, I think I'm going to be back on the 22nd. So, it's basically 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Basically 10 days. <clears throat> um, that's how all chess masters count on their fingers. Chess 960. So I'm going to be playing this GM tournament. It's like a 2450 average round robin. 10 players all play all one game. Pray you get five whites and four blacks, I guess. Though honestly, in all honesty, I don't think that my score with black is much worse than my score with white. It's not as... Um, not as polarized as some players. I think that's because my openings with black are actually better worked out than my openings with white. <clears throat> Nevertheless, it's always a little more pleasant to be white. Again, I feel like I'm playing the closed Sicilian, which uh, I haven't done since like 1991 when I played it against Josh Whiteskin. And I groveled for a draw with knight against rook. I literally, I don't think I really ever played any close Sicilians with white since that game. It was just an unpleasant game and, and it made me not want to play that opening anymore. Um, that was, that was only 25 years ago. Do a lot of grandmasters have a color bias? Well, <clears throat> you know, there's some grandmasters who are more old school conservative style who still play like you know I mean it's like win with white draw with black that's kind of like a classic mentality <clears throat> Karpov very much Karpov very much um, used that and, and not just Karpov is an example of someone who was like a world champion I mean it's kind of a classic way of thinking about the game you draw with draw with black, win with white. You're in great shape in any situation, almost. Um, but obviously, life is not that clear cut. And a lot of modern grandmasters, I mean, not just modern grandmasters, Kasparov and Fisher, particularly players who played very aggressively with black. Um, so there's a big difference between like Petrosian and Karpov and and like a Fisher and a Petrosian, Fisher and Kasparov, who who play like super aggressive, very very aggressive openings with the black pieces. I think it's it's better to to be aggressive with black, um, but it depends on who you're playing. You know, if they're higher rated or lower rated. I think you need to take every game on a on a case by case basis. But yeah, I think that a lot of even grandmasters are are too <clears throat> too focused on that kind of classic concept. That it's okay to like draw with black and you need to win with white. I'm not really sure about this. 
this move. It's okay. It is a powerful bishop on h8. I'm kind of a pessimistic player by nature, and um, I don't like to lose, so I, I like the safety first approach. Although I think the game needs to, I was saying this the other day, I think the game needs to have a life of its own, and you need to respect the position, go with the flow a little bit. Some of my games get totally out of control. I'm not always playing like safe chess um, at all, but I think that I try to play like safely when I have the choice. Um, <clears throat> Petrosia was almost unbeatable, right? I mean, Karpov very much as well. Petrosia made too many draws. I mean, everybody would criticize him for that. You know, I think it's part laziness and part, like, just hating to lose. You know, there's a combination of the two. Like, in my case, it's definitely 50-50 you know, not fighting hard enough is like part laziness. And also I hate losing, you know, so I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, draw too many games than, than like ever lose. But, um, of course this is, this is not really possible. This year I lost like five games. I won maybe nine and I drew like 30. Um, I think that's, that's like my, my year result thus far is something like nine wins maybe 10 wins, five, five losses and like 30 draws. Um, that's not really that typical for players, you know, under GM level with grandmasters. You see a lot of draws, which is normal to some extent, but it depends on who you're talking about. If you look at the London Chess Classic, you know, after like five rounds, there were like two decisive games. That's a hundred games. No, what am I saying? <laughs> hundred games. Uh, that's 25 games uh, and two draws. No, two wins and, and 23 draws um, in 25 games in the first five rounds of the London Chess Classic. You know, I think this has gone down a little bit since they've tried to institute these rules about like discouraging draws but it's not like it's going away completely <clears throat> draws are part of the game you know you want to change the rules of chess or something you can probably eliminate draws but Now, I, I, I can't castle queenside, I just realized. I'm a little worried about my king's safety. He's obviously tucked away safely. Lots of shelter for his king, but I'm getting kind of aggressive in the center here. And I might regret it, I don't know. But we're gaining space. Speaking of Karpov. Okay, time. Time is money. If I take that, I'm afraid, I'm afraid I'm gonna lose some control of the center. Let's let's go here first. The problem is I'm a little bit behind in development. <clears throat> now I could castle though, theoretically. If I could move my knight. I'm actually quite happy to see the move e4 because, okay, he's attacking my pawn. I'm not going to be happy if I can't protect it adequately, but... <clears throat> I felt I was behind in development a bit, and um, he's also fixing his pawns on the wrong color. Almost clicked resign by accident. Um, knight c4. We'll just play blockade. <clears throat> no, I still can't castle because of my rooks on d1.
pick a square. I still can't castle because I'm hanging my A2 pawn again. Damn it. Oh. That. Wow, that's crazy. Okay. Please sacrifice your peace, Mr. Troll. Troll's getting better with the time management. He hasn't lost on time yet. Which is pretty impressive. Blockade. Strongly recommend, you know, studying Nimzovich. Here, man, he's got so much central control. Knight C2. Watch out for forks. And I wish I could get my other knight to, to E3. Queen is not the ideal blockader. You may have <laughs> you may have already known that. No, going to B6 was not what I expected. But I could blockade with a knight now. My, my queen is very much blocked in. My bishop is very much blocked in. Needs to pull back here to f1. Hoping he doesn't have some kind of sealer sweeper type of pawn sack. Probably not. Got a really, really good blockade going on now. Let's just lock it down. <clears throat> and we want to blockade the other the other square but still I don't know if I can make any progress I'm okay we've got the blockade but as far as like forward progress really hard to do here even though his bishop's really bad maybe the last move was bad um, I could actually maybe play c4 in some position that's kind of risky Engine says it's like dead equal. Queen c7, king b1. Good, good game troll. Solid, solid positional battle. Um, this is one of my lower chess 960. Oh, there we go. We got some inaccuracies in there. <clears throat> Too fast for him. Clash Kid says at the GM level, most of the games start with E45. At the Super GM level, yeah, that's an important qualification to make. You know, in open tournaments, it's less, less, much, less the case. Um, yeah, they like to play E45. I think that computers have kind of increased people's awareness of, of like, say, the Sicilian defense not being as reliable as as uh, E45. I mean. It seems like if you just plug in E45 and E4C5, the evaluation might be a little bit more in E5's favor. I haven't checked lately with Stockfish, but <clears throat> we can see. What's the difference? Oh, this is just 960, duh. Let's play Juicebox. Juicebox, you gotta challenge me to five plus three. Can you change your challenge? <clears throat> if you don't mind Juicebox, change the challenge to, uh, to increment. I'll play with Aldisto, which is a really tough pairing. Not really feeling like I'm very sharp yet. Aldisto strong. If they want to play for a win, they shouldn't play the Karol Khan, definitely, or the Petrov, definitely. We had a Petrov yesterday against um, I Take Back, and I was saying how it's really tough to play that. It's really tough to play that for a win. Let's play E4, E5 here against Aldisto. Petrov, Karol Khan, you can only play for a win against, you know, Shirov or some other ultra-aggressive opponent. You could use those openings as the bullfighter style, you know, inducing another guy to try to rip your head off. Um, and then try to pick up the pieces when he's done, like, overextending himself. But um, to straight up play for a win with the Karol Khan is not really possible. Same, same goes here for the Petrov. 
I don't really know the four knights too well, so that's why I'm playing bishop b4. Swidler had a four knights at the Russian super final where he got a really, really bad position. He played Hare Krishna's variation with like bishop b5, bishop d6. It's rare to see Swidler like just get a totally like almost lost position, but I think after 20 moves, his position was, was nearly lost. But he managed to hold on somehow. I don't remember who he was playing against. I don't remember if we've played this with Aldis though before. I think that queen e7 might actually be a move here. <clears throat> but it's, it's kind of a materialistic approach. Better to just castle. You're playing a new member at your chess club who's 1900 fide and she was just passive trying to absorb the pressure and wait for me to sacrifice something. <clears throat> well, I mean, I think you're not you're not that consistent yet, Arsenal fan, because you you haven't played enough like over the board games to really, you know, establish your rating. What is this? Um okay, I have no idea what this is. Very strange. What is going on, folks, in this position? Well, that, that eliminates rookie eight from the candidate moves here. Wow. Um, maybe Aldisto knows something I, I don't know. I've never seen this. Once again, Queen E7 kind of feels right. Um, then I guess, what does he do? Yeah, I think I need to play Queen E7 now. We, we want to get our pawn back. I mean, I guess you could take on C3. But I don't really like making that kind of exchange unprovoked. <clears throat> Center fork trick. Um... Okay. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible you could do knight takes e4. It looks a little risky. Um, rather not have to calculate all that. I think the main point here is that knight d3 bishop takes c3 and I've got queen takes e4 which is a very nasty sort of problem or white losing a piece um, <clears throat> so that knight d3 type of idea never works and therefore I guess his position isn't isn't really good normally in this line you retreat the knight back to d3 Black exchanges on c3, then you take with the knight on e4. And white has the two bishops. The knight bouncing through like f4 later on. You know, I guess this seems like kind of consistent. We should try to win a piece, I guess. Wait a minute, d5, knight takes d5. But I have bishop takes c3, there's a double check. d5, knight takes d5. Queen takes e4, check, knight e3. Then d5 again. Okay. 
Okay, that's stupid. And he has like knight g5. Getting really confusing. d5, knight takes d5. I guess that's not good for me. Sadly. Can I go here first? I'm not sure if this is good. I'm not sure of much of anything. D5, knight takes D5 does not work because the queen takes D4 check, but it does because he has knight E3 at the end. Um, Aniket, I thought. <clears throat> That was my first thought, and then I realized, oh crap, maybe it doesn't work. Don't ask me what's going on now. My queen is under attack. All right, I don't know. I'm just getting confused. If I didn't have 52 seconds left, I would probably investigate taking on e4. We could have a slightly worse. I'm down a pawn. Oh, I've got to take on g2. Okay. Guess I'm just lost here now. I have to say I missed that. Bishop back to e2. And bishop takes b7. <clears throat> Most unfortunate. I'm still down a pawn. And the exchange, it looks like. Man, what a move. I guess I'm just busted. We have some practical chances, but we're just down the exchange.
both sides, you know, probably made some inaccuracies. It's a sharp line. I definitely have better. I guess I should have taken on e4 with check when I had the chance. losing everything here. Damn, he's strong. <clears throat> Why didn't I check on A1? I get mated. Just no defense. All right. Nice game, man. This is some really weird move. I've never seen this in my life. <clears throat> um, it's the best move according to Stockfish. Well, that's weird. It's only been played in four games. Everybody played Queen E7. Chris Torres, whoever that is. Antonia Freus is a... It's a Portuguese, I think. <clears throat> and then some other guy. Some games in 98 and 2001. I'm sure that we can find... <coughs> we'll probably find some old game with this if we look in chess base. But apparently this is like a mistake. I should just take on f7. It's certainly okay to take on f7. But I thought I had better. But I missed knight d6 check. And then... It looks like I'm actually winning here. After queen takes e4 check. Is this just trapped here on c8? Bad game by <laughs> by both of us. Um, I don't know why I thought this was not that clear. Queen e2. Queen takes g2. Rook f1 or queen f1. Rook e8 check, bishop e2, rook takes e2, <laughs> um, but I mean I have multiple moves here, so I'm basically winning, this I probably wouldn't see, I mean, wouldn't be able to find this line. But I was looking for lines where I can bring my bishop back and try to trap the knight on c8. You know, that's the general gist of it. So after rook takes c8, I'm just worse. I thought it was better than that. I didn't see bishop e2. But even queen e2. Um, well, queen e2 I thought was okay for me. Basically, I missed this. Bishop e2 and bishop f3. B7 is loose. I could have played rookie 8 and just been down a pawn. This is probably my best. Okay, man, good game. Um, well, I don't I don't think it was prep. I mean, he might have known bishop c4, but after queen e7, you got nothing. Well, let's see knight f3, let the sensible move. This is how all the games went. It's probably drawish. D takes c Queen takes e4 check, queen e2, and you have to trade queens. White has a tiny, tiny advantage here, um, honestly. It's probably a draw, but black has to watch out. Be careful for the bishop pair. 
Okay guys, um, Juicebox Wizard re-challenged me. I'm playing this, the subscribers here. Good game. Not a good game, but anyway, good game. We both made mistakes. <clears throat> but I learned something. Bishop c4. Totally obscure variation. I was surprised. Um, another chess 960. Okay, this is our last chess 960 today. Too many chess 960s gives me a headache. Anyways, let's see. We've got bishops in the center. That's weird. Knights before bishops. That's what they say. The center fork trick doesn't work. Okay. But I mean, the simplest solution was to just take on f7. I was trying to be fancy. I mean, I'm probably right, you know, not... Not just taking back on f7, but I totally overlooked knight d6 check. So that's not very... They say you're supposed to analyze um, wide before you look deep, and I didn't see knight d... I was looking like primarily at knight h6 check, thinking <clears throat> about that, and it's not good to miss knight d6 check. All right. What are we going to do? It's hard to get the pieces out here without tripping over each other. The bishops in particular. My knights and bishops are tricky. Very tricky here. Not sure I brought out... I mean, I'm not sure this is a good move, but he copied me, so... Or he replied symmetrically. I don't know if he's trying to copy me, but... He did the same thing, so my point is that any defect in my position is, is also in his. Um, all right, we'll just play it, play it quietly. I need a second coffee, man. I didn't finish my first. My coffee was weak today. I think that's the problem. Weak coffee. Need to wake up. But I thank Aldisto for playing something new that I had never seen. It's good to learn. At least if I'm going to lose a game, I, I feel like I learned something from it. It takes me a long time to wake up in the morning, and, and I'm not very good tactically. Um... Until I've played maybe 10 or 15 games. I should have just taken on F7. <clears throat> Honestly, I'm surprised though. The, the chess engine thought I was pretty much better after taking on F7. And typically those kind of situations can be like equal. I wasn't sure, honestly, if I was really better. It's hard to evaluate. Generally speaking, this kind of Sicilian Pierce defense type of trade for two pieces for rook and pawn it's usually um it's usually good for for black but he's already got one pawn you know that's what bothered me about the situation i was already down a pawn and now he's taking on f7 so he's going to have two pawns and a rook for two pieces which is actually you know that's actually materially oftentimes good for the side that gets the two pawns and the rook especially if you're getting to like an end game or something like that but we are not in the end game. We're in the opening, and um, in the early middle game opening, it seems like the minor pieces are much more important. So that's why I'm better there. To make a long story short, e5. Wow, that's like scary looking opening up this diagonal. But it's actually his bad bishop. I don't think this hurts him to trade. I don't think that exchange benefits me. My good bishop for his bad bishop. <coughs> My queen is um, is a problem. I'm definitely worried about that here. Taking on e5. Is 
if I take on e5 and then try to play maybe b3, I'm just going to get my queen. My queen is going to get total. All right, this is really passive. But I've got to do something without losing on time. I'm not really thinking clearly yet today. I just didn't see anything I like here. I don't really like him taking and having to take back this way. I don't really like taking on e5. I don't like c4. I don't like any of my other options. I don't like bishop g4 check. So I'm playing kind of passively, Karo Khan style. That's okay though. Alright, now what? Chess 960 is a hard game. It's not like normal chess. I'm in a completely alien situation here. Completely. We're playing the Karo Khan, basically. This bishop is ill. He still has hope, though. He has hope to get out. Black has more space. I don't know, I think I need to go to a training course on chess 960 openings. I'm absolutely... If traps my own queen, eh. I can play a3. I think we'll play a3 and queen a2. I didn't really see anything better. Though now he's playing b5, like, uber-aggressively. It's kind of a weird move. <clears throat> Maybe I should play a4. Seems strange to open up. Over there. I'm just gonna lose on time. It's like juice box wizard should switch to, uh... To chest nine sixty. It's pretty fast and aggressive. Black is just better, more space. I'm having second thoughts about castling um, queenside. Amazing space advantage by black. I love the way he's played this. Just at every every stage he plays instantly and, and makes a strong move. I mean, it's just been space, space, space for black. I have no idea what I'm doing. H3 was bad, but I started to panic because of the time situation. He has three minutes to my 13 seconds. I don't know where my time even went. He was actually challenging me to 5-0 before. It's a good thing I didn't play 5-0. I would have lost on time already. But he's like, dude... You're playing like really strong here. Um, you're better at chess 960 than normal chess. Should uh, you should specialize? Most people, it takes them more time to play in chess 960. It takes me more time. He's faster at chess 960 than in normal. Um, okay, it's really blocked. Black has a big space advantage, but it's hard for him to break through. And. Um, I mean, I'm just kind of groveling for a draw here. Extremely well-coordinated position. All I can do is try to block it up. He could maybe play f4, trade the h-pawn, but I don't think that's 
that good. I mean, this pawn on f4 would be pretty strong. Obviously, I didn't play this very well. Black is absolutely playing this masterfully till g5. g5 jettisons his pawn structure, which would be okay um, if he could enforce h4. But it's not that easy to do. Still, I have so little space that um, black may well not really mind that small pawn structure defect. defect. I've been reluctant to castle queenside because of the space he could make a pawn sack or break with c5 or b4. So it's going to take a long time to um, to creep out. Whoa, okay, this is just crazy. He just basically went nuts. <clears throat> Sacrificing a pawn for nothing. We, uh, we have a problem with our pieces, obviously. My king has to migrate outward. We'll have to get the queen and the rook out. Everybody has to get out. First knight f1, knight e3, and then something like maybe bishop d2, castles, king side. I still don't know where to castle. Man, he's coming with it. Still attacking me. Still got compensation, two pawns down. Very aggressive play by Black. The B4, I would play, I would have played C5 there. <clears throat> I think you had C5 for reals. Um, and, and then clear the queen down here. I don't know if that was the best move by me. I don't think you lack in aggression there, Juice Box Wizard. You're not lacking in aggression. Offering me a draw. Dude, I'm up three pawns, right? I'm not gonna take a draw like up three pawns. <laughs> um you've you've basically kind of overdone it. Not even my rook is protected. Oh no, it's not. Well, anyways. You know, I'll just give one of the three pawns back. That's all right. I can handle that. Now he loses on time. This is definitely a very weird game. Um, I have an awful position. Where did I go wrong? I mean, knight d2 was okay. It was a little passive. Then he plays e5. And here, it's very strange. Um, my first inclination was to do what the engine says, to take on e5 and play knight f3, but I guess here, I didn't think he has to, you know, go knight... Well, knight c4 is one thing. Well, let's just say he goes back to, I don't know, anywhere, like c6. I, I misevaluated this position. I thought I was not better here. I guess I looked at knight c4 as well. Like, Stockfish says I'm better here. I, I don't know, you know? I mean, b3. My first problem is that I'm hallucinating there's a bishop on f8 because it's like chess 960, and there's always a bishop on f8 in normal chess. So, 
I'm looking at this position and thinking, oh my god, I can't play b3, you know, but he has, that's a knight on f8. So, <clears throat> um, Kingside Castle was legal toward the end, yeah. So that's the problem, like, sometimes I have hallucinations, like, I see this, I look at this line and I'm just saying, oh no, that's not good, because if I play b3, he has this. But it's, it's obviously not a legal move. Um, anyway, like, this wouldn't be that clear. Knight a3. So this was kind of key. He had a huge advantage. <clears throat> I mean, it looks like here. His spatial advantage is so big that the engine gives him like minus 1.5. He's not up any material, but he does have breaks like c5. I'm not sure if I would play that. But I mean, g5 is just a clearly bad, bad move strategically. And then, um, he still got a big space advantage. I'd still rather be black, even though he wrecks his pawn structure. Then this was... He just starts sacrificing stuff, like, maniacally. Forcing things too much. Um, I'm gonna play Clash Kid, another subscriber. If, if we run out of subscribers, I will accept the other challenges, guys. I'm not trying to ignore the, the other challenge. Prash challenged me to 7 plus 3, but... I've got to, uh... Answer the subscribers first. Yeah, Juicebox, um... You know, you can never, uh, <laughs> you might have accidentally clicked the, the draw button, but, um, you know, I'm still compressed there, but I, I mean, I'm not going to take a draw, even though I have, like, no space when I'm three pawns up, even two pawns up, but you still have a lot of tricks, but the last result that's going to happen there is a draw. I mean, either I'm going to win on my material advantage, or you're going to. Or you're going to win because I'm going to fall for some trick and, and get mated or something. But there's no way it's a draw. Um, in some positions, like, you might have have it locked up. You know, if, if, if it's, like, one pawn, one pawn down, you know, maybe it's just, like, totally still locked. But, nah, I, I mean, I'll never take a draw there. So, Clash Kid... I don't know... He doesn't play a lot of a lot of the morning streams. Guys, I have a simul on Sunday. That was a really bad opening by me though. Yeah, obviously like Clash Kid mentioned it was passive with my clean on A1. There's no way to get out. So I had to take on E5. That was the line I wanted to play, but I just like I showed you, I didn't I didn't really like giving up the central pawn. And um I didn't think I was better there. But I guess it's better than, you know, it was the lesser of the evils, basically, in that position to take on e5. So it's like a Panov Botvinnik. Well, it's it, it's actually more of a semi-slav here with d4. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. And it's not quite a Panov. No, it, it is a Panov. What am I talking about? The draw variation. The, I play this for black, um, but I've been playing g6 a lot here. Miles tried to play bishop e6 sometimes, but I don't think it's really right to play bishop e6 in this position. It's okay if white plays like bishop g5 instead of knight f3. There was a game recently with that. Another game at the, uh, oh, this was a game at the Russian Super Final. Instead of knight on f3, bishop on g5. Another line I've played quite a bit. So, maybe we can transpose. Chess knight 60 was invented, so there's no draw. Maybe. Less draws, anyway. Clash Kid is sacking a pawn. Normally you play bishop b6 there. I guess it's not that bad for black, as, as it seems. If I play with knight takes, um, 
I guess black has bishop g4. Probably he should play bishop g7. Yeah, knight takes bishop g7. I think that black has a reasonable compensation there. This move gains time for me. And actually exchanging bishops on d7 would probably be a decent thing to do. Um, ironically, I think I might have actually had this happen in a blitz game once. It's not really correct for black, but it's possible that it's not that bad. Yeah, he has to play knight b8. Um, nothing else would be decent. So bishop b5 check. <clears throat> I mean, I develop a piece, but... If he responds correctly there, um, I'm just sticking my bishop on b5 on a stupid square. Though I could play knight e5 and maybe trade more pieces into a simplified position where I'm just up a pawn. Bishop b5 check. Knight d7, knight e5, castles. Take twice on d7 and then castle. Rook c8. And he's starting rook c4. Black seems to have pretty good drawing chances, even, even potentially winning chances. So I'm beginning to think that like bishop b5 check is not not my best move. Could just simply play maybe bishop e2. Queen b3 is an interesting move. You know what just, okay, it occurs to me he could try to sack a pawn with e6 at some point. All right, anyway, we've got to make a move. It's a blitz game. I don't know. Over protecting the d5 and averting like any kind of bishop g4 pins. Yeah, you can't play knight b4, of course. Lose a piece. Um... But you know what? Black has a bishop pair and my pawns are doubled. So it's not a good version of this kind of gambit, but it's actually still, you probably still have like half a pawn compensation. I don't think that it's that good, Aniket. I think that Arsenal fan is closer to the truth. Like half a pawn, maybe a little more for white. Um, I guess there's some thought of like bishop c4 maybe. Knight d7, castles. Knight b6, rook e1. You know what? But what am I going to do, let's say, down the line? When he plays knight b6, my bishop's on c4, then he... Is it really logical to put my bishop on c4? It would sort of cut out e6 for good. Temporarily. Not not for good, but temporarily. We're cutting out like e6, hopefully. <clears throat> I could play a4, a5 quickly. But I want a castle. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of the structure. A4, knight b6, a5. It's a plan. It's a bad plan. It's a bad plan. We gotta go with the flow now. Here we are. Um, bad plan is better than no plan at all. That's... That's what they say. I should just castle. I mean, I think that a4 is kind of a waste of time. 
All right, whatever. Maybe we'll queen the A-pawn at the end of the day. But you got to trust in Black's position strategically. He's got the two bishops. He has a sound pawn structure. Um, I would definitely be willing to play this type of structure, and I and I can in in like in this g6 lines of Panov too. But he was supposed to play. You're supposed to play bishop b6. I think there are other moves like knight e4 is actually playable. Um, it's an old line. It's not really great. You might be able to take on c4 <coughs> as well. I don't remember. Um, queen a5, though. This definitely did not... This did not um, light up on the radar screen. Queen a5. Huh. But well, anyway... I'm out of here. He's just preventing me physically from playing a5. Doesn't really it doesn't really bother me since I feel like a4 was probably a stupid plan in the first place. Um more fundamental things I should be taking care of. You could play queen b5 here. Then I will lose my pawn. Theoretically, I can pull this bishop back. But then I think my d5 pawn will probably fall. Not a very fun position for either side, really. We had something similar the other day. Arsenal fan? Did we? Maybe that's why it's so, so familiar to me. Last week, or was it this week? Two nights, though, I will make this comment, and I'll let you guys think about it and mull it over. Um, I have noticed, as always, that the two the two nights are usually very happy, you know, together, and they play better than like bishop and knight do against the bishop pair. There's a book by Josef Dorfman which I mentioned where he talks about uh, tandems of pieces, rook and bishop being better than rook and knight, queen and knight obviously better than queen and bishop. <clears throat> but also, we should talk about like two knights being better than bishop and knight um, against the bishop pair. What we want to have is, is a fixed structure. You know, I could play d6 at some moment to to liberate some squares for my knight on d5 or something like that. To feed back the pawn. That idea exists, although he could probably answer with like e6. You know how this is going to go. Because I love doubled pawns. But I mean, the important thing is like dynamism and and the rooks like having open, open files. That's kind of annoying for him to deal with this this a file problem. My knights are just maintaining the center. We've got good control of the center thanks to the the knights. <clears throat> That's a lot of arrows. <clears throat> so. Is he actually threatening anything? Not really. I guess he can... Um, <coughs> excuse me. I guess he can play bishop d3, bishop c4. But there's knights hopping everywhere, you know, in his face. This 
this doesn't stop bishop. It stops. Doesn't stop bishop c2, bishop b3. That's another plan. It's hard to stop all those maneuvers. Okay, I thought this would happen eventually. Well, all right. Now my b pawn is a target. Played really well by Black. I do have an idea though. We're obviously threatening G4, G5, taking out the E7 pawn. I think Black still has about the same evaluation we started with. Something like he's down half a pawn here. He's not like lost, but What a move. Um... Looks like Yeah, it looks pretty strong. Bishop D seven ninety five. Let's see here. So before I play G five, you know, if you just take some sort of defensive measure in this position, H five It looks like you're absolutely fine. Then you can play rook b6. So, <clears throat> good game, man. Um, I take back. We didn't play today, did we? I gotta check, but <laughs> I can't remember who I played today and who I haven't played today. We didn't play I take back. Right, that was yesterday. It's hard to con it's it's easy to confuse the the streams like the night before with the um with the stream, you know, in the morning. Sometimes I forget, like did we play last night or was it this morning? Um Alright. No, that was an interesting game. Obviously we both, you know, made some mistakes. <clears throat> Succumb to the pressure, the time pressure. Clash doesn't really like Blitz that much, which I fully respect. I don't think, you know, you have to play Blitz to be a good player. I think it's important to become a, a good player first, and then you can start to be good at Blitz. It doesn't have to be the other way around. Um, you could definitely, like, become a GM and then, and then start playing Blitz later. Benoni. The Benoni... But I don't think it's essential to play Blitz. It's good It's good training. Like, I I never solved that many tactics problems. I was never that into doing tactics problems. And I think 
any kind of tactical ability I have, I learn more from playing Blitz than, than doing tactics problems. Now, a6... is a specialty move. <clears throat> it seems like he's asking for f4. Let's go for it. The sharpest reply. Um, not the only way for white to play. I don't think I've ever had this position in a game. It's a pretty radical idea by black to try to play the early a6 b5 and ignore my central pawn wedge. Um, you know, I think everybody who's like playing bullet has to remember that like Hikaru Nakamura, you know, he, he would have, he was like a strong player before he started playing, I guess he always played blitz, but still, I think that it's, it's better to, to focus on, <clears throat> on slow chess. And once you become a strong player, you can improve your, your skills of playing really fast. But I think the priority has to be on playing well before you put priority on playing fast. <clears throat> this is craziness. But we have to treat it with respect like everything else. Um, so I take on f6, you take on c3. Okay, we have a check on e2. I think we have to go into this variation. We take, he takes, we check, he moves his king, then we take on g7. Hopefully we win a piece. Now his king is safe, relatively speaking. But he's just down a piece here. Hard to see any any compensation for black really <clears throat> I don't know whether it's better to I could even play king f2 actually it's really hard to decide which way to recapture I mean interpose on on e2 or move the yeah we're just winning Maybe I should even play a3, h3, getting dyslexic. h3, bishop f5, queen takes c3. Well, I could still do king f2. But my king walks out into kind of the danger zone there. We're up a clear piece.
Or should we do some kind of prophylactic move first? Really not sure. Of course. Now I have to play an awkward move. <clears throat> he actually has dangerous threats here. Maybe I should just play like King F1. I have this move. I definitely didn't expect him to pin himself there. <clears throat> Very creative play. That's gotta go. <clears throat> Scary player, this I take back. <laughs> it's like, where do you come up with this kind of thing? I mean, if you played the very best moves, I, I even might have been in, in an unclear position, I think. I don't know, in, in one moment it might have been enough. Queen e3 is even a good move to stop me from castling queenside. He had this evil check here on g1, too, if I try to play a rook move, rook f3. <clears throat> right, it's a one move threat, rook b4. Now we're going to try to prove that our extra piece is worth something. I take I take back. You've been you've been playing on the stream for a couple of weeks. Seems like even a little longer. <clears throat> 10 games. I want to see if he had enough compensation. I mean, now black is probably losing, but okay, I could still mess it up. Um, yes, this is definitely the best move. A5. But I want to know, like, at the at the best, how much compensation he had here. Still not that easy for me. <clears throat> I 
there's almost no weak points in his position and he keeps finding like very quick moves to cause trouble and he's extremely fast too what's his bullet rating doesn't have one oddly doesn't have a bullet rating that's strange He's attacking my pawn again. He's fast. Should definitely have a bullet rating. Just trading queens is is like a miracle. Pre moved there. <clears throat> All right, um, wow, that's craziness. I mean, yeah, so if you look at this position, um, the vast majority of quote unquote masters played a4. After a4, g6, white's next move is, is a question. a4 g6 bishop d3 I guess that's okay for white but it's interesting that like 13 players played f4 and it's the most high scoring move here black actually played bishop g4 which well that's two three games so Mecking played f4, Fernando Peralta played f4 in a recent game against good old Munoz Pantoja. I know both of those guys. And Gabor Nodge lost. Who is this guy, Miranda? It's a Polish guy, right? Okay, that always throws me because it sounds like an Hispanic name. And, uh, and, and it's actually a guy who's from Poland. Okay. So... Nodge Gabor played this and lost against Miranda. Narciso. Munoz Pantoja, two games winning with Black against Narciso and Fernando Peralta. Um, wow, crazy. So, B5. Now, nobody's done that. Munoz Pantoja must play G6 here. Or he played Bishop G4 or what? Queen E7? No. What did Munoz do? He didn't do that either. What the hell did Munoz play? Bishop e7. Nodge Gabor played bishop e7. I mean, that's just stupid for black. Um, queen c7. No. <clears throat> Why am I not finding these Munoz games? Bishop g4. Okay. This is weird, man. I mean, this doesn't look right for black. He beat both Peralta and Narciso with, with this. This looks like garbage, um, honestly, for black. They were just not well prepared for this position. Damn, that's a lucky result for him. I mean, I don't know. But this this looks a little bit weird. Plus 8. Point 8 according to the engine. That's not good. Plus, point, plus 1. And um, let's see. Who played bishop e2? Peralta is really strong. I mean, there's no way he should lose this position against a weaker player. Bishop takes e2. Uh-huh. So immediately he makes a mistake. He takes with the knight. I don't know which is better. Okay, let's let's see. Hmm. Munoz has his own systems worked out. He's kind of a tricky openings guy. He played e4, c5, g3 against me. I don't know, but anyway, white should be better there. So let's see. Black goes on to play b5 here. We're actually following a Bogdan Lelich game. And Leon Gostisa, who's not bad. So Lelich plays F takes G7. The game disappears. This guy must have resigned against Lelich. Lalich. 
Bruno Laurent must have just resigned. I mean, the game just disappears from the database right on that move. He must have literally resigned here. But the Rogul played on. Best move, novelty, sacking a piece. So it looks like I should play king f2, not pinning myself. And I'm just up, I'm just winning. I guess with, with this move, I, I kind of gave him a little bit of play. The engine will dis be dismissive of this, but... Um, I thought maybe you should play knight f6 here. I can just castle, okay. That was one of my plans, actually, <clears throat> to play like this. So it wasn't quite sound, but interesting try. Um, Alpha Zero almost proved the Queen's Indian defense is lost for black. What do you What do you mean? <laughs> the Gambit line they play with d5, dude. That's like millions of years old. Um, it's definitely a sound sound Gambit line, but I don't think that the game was perfect by any means. I don't know, but it's possible. I like that. I like the gambit line. But it's not even forced to take it. Black can play other ways, probably. Knight a6 or something. Um, so I wouldn't go that far. And uh, Black could even play d5. So the Queen's, Queen's Indian is hard for, hard, hardly refuted. Um, even if the gambit line with d5 is, is proven to be good somehow for white. But... All right, let's let's go on. We got more challenges from World Loser. Um, let's see. Let's play this one game with Prash. He's been here waiting a long time. If he's still here, I want to give the the viewers, the guest viewers, a chance to play once in a while. Enrique Mecking plays in your local cafe. Are you serious? Do you live in Brazil? He made a brief comeback like 10, 15 years ago. I think he won the, the Petropolis Zonal Tournament like shockingly um, years ago. Ahead of a lot of strong players in like the seven, in the late 70s. One of the greatest players ever from Brazil. Maybe, maybe the greatest. <clears throat> but he had, you know, kind of neurotic tendencies. Has. Um, what's that? T.I. thought his name was Heinrich. Heinrich Mecking. Enrique. Enrique. I don't know how they pronounce it in Brazil. In Spanish, it's Enrique. Um, Brazilian is very distinct. Not the same as Spanish, I know. A namesake, wow. Very possible he was the hero of Brazilian chess. Maybe he has a son or something. Enrique Mecking II. Well, the original one is still alive. I just, he doesn't really, play. he was, I think he even played on ICC for a while. I'm taking a break from the viewer, um, from the subscriber challenges to play a new player here, Prash. We played once before, I didn't realize that. Guys, I have a simul stream on Sunday, 7 p.m. CET, Central European time. Arsenal fan, different guy. He's probably the strongest guy in my... I thought you said country. I was like, your country? <laughs> my county. Interesting. I like this move better than Queen A4.
H6 looks, it looks a little bit slow. Solid, but slow. And so since we can't go to G5, I guess we'll opt for the lazy river here bishop b2 and, and go to the long diagonal with the bishop i really like this line for white i see a lot of people who play uh who play this way with black chigorin style when i play knight f3 and g3 and i've always had really good results against the normal chigorin with the classical lines but My results with white are so good against the setup that um, I'm starting to think about playing like g3 against the Chigorin anyway, just d4, d5, knight f3 and g3, um, knight f3, knight c6. Basically, if I play d4, d5, knight f3, knight c6, I'll just play g3 rather than c4. It's basically like a reversed anti Grunfeld or something like that. <clears throat> with an extra tempo. Hey, Ayesta, what's up? Your brain still hurts from the 960 game. I know the 960 game, and it definitely shouldn't be played in the morning without at least three cups of coffee. This is a really, really extreme move. Black's not completing his development. He's weakening his king side, but radically like controlling the e4 square. I think I say, okay, I even thought about queen b1, <coughs> but at the end of the day, um, I think that putting a knight on b4 is misplacing his pieces. I could take time to play the luxurious a3. I really want to just straight up e4 and um, I don't have a perfect pawn structure you know don't be too anal retentive about your pawn structure um, pawn structure cannot always be perfect some people try to try to like exaggerate and then you know put it all ahead of all ahead of all considerations I think that's a mistake This guy's pretty solid, I will say that. Bullet doesn't matter. He plays a lot of bullet. 2,000 blitz. Rapid 197. It's kind of like the, we played against the Dutch. And we've achieved E4, which I talked about recently. Calling the opening into question if you achieve E4 in a sense. It also feels like a French defense. Black is extremely solid here. My A3 may not be such a bad idea after all. He also has the French defense maneuver, Bishop E8. But I was kind of hoping that if he does, if he does that, I can play Rook E1 and go for his E6 pawn. He doesn't really, I mean, he, he, he can play rook e8. Sorry for stuttering, but, you know, English is my first language. Uh, rook on a to e8 is, isn't really like where you want to have a rook um, behind the pawn passively. He doesn't really have any other options, though. Tense position. White is slightly better. But his strong, his strong knight on d5 pretty much makes it difficult for me to break through. I'm thinking maybe King's Indian style, h4, h4, h5 even, or h4, bishop h3. I can't play that. But we have a lot of space we can maneuver. We might be able to play knight back here and then change change our focus. 
I'm a little worried about F2 though. No d5, unfortunately. So, where's he going? Pulling his knight back off of off of d5. He's he's gonna try to move the other knight and play bishop c6 or what? I don't really understand what he's doing here. We could just pile up. He wants to play knight f5. Now that could lead to problems. Should we just pile up with rook e2? I feel like I need to think of, of a deeper plan here. Um, knight on f e5. Knight takes e5, pawn takes e5, bishop takes e5, pawn takes e5. I mean, I'm better there. But I'll no longer have the pressure on the backward pawn that I have now. If I play knight e5, he takes with the bishop and gives up his bishop, and we've got a totally different structure now. <clears throat> but anyway, I mean, I need to do something. This is just like an exchange of advantages, I think. Fixing my pawn structure. Um, you got to be willing to do that. You know, constantly be willing to change the focus. Change the type of advantage you have or exchange it for another kind of advantage. I'm willing to give up my pressure on the open file here and exchange it for like a pawn structure improvement and the two bishops. Our advantage remains. It's just taking a different form. I can't play e5, I mean d5, because he had just pawn takes d5, and it's just uh, losing a pawn. We've just got space, you know, space is, is space, and you, you can't deny space, man. There's a few things I want to watch out for, bishop b5, namely. Um, now I can play f4, though. We have good dark square control. We can jump on the d-file. The Pomniachi is not trading queens here. Right, troll? When you smell blood in the water, <clears throat> I guess you don't trade queens. Plus that would bring his knight to a good square. His king is more exposed than my king. And in that kind of situation, I think he shouldn't trade queens. Plus I have more time. The position's a little harder for black to, spit, to play with less space. I was thinking just like a bishop on e4 might be good. Now... Prash needs to try to trade bishops. I think knight d8 and bishop c6 is a is a really important question there. Though he didn't get it in. Um, if I play rook d1, black has knight to d5. Other ideas. a4 is interesting to play bishop a3. But I don't really want to see him trading my bishop off, my, my g2 bishop. Rook d1, knight to d5, f4. Otherwise, okay, he can play rook d8. Maybe I should have thought about these other moves. Rook d8 or bishop back to c8 are not so bad. I'm actually happy to see bishop c8, though. He did play it this way. So now he doesn't have any real active play um, of any kind. a4 is interesting. 
But we can go with the other knight back. A4, knight e7, bishop a3. He's trying to play like bishop c6, it looks like. F4. He's going to try to set up a, a, a white square blockade. There I go stuttering again. White square blockade. Um, man, a4, bishop a3 is bad news. Okay, I don't know. Maybe we can try to play for f5. Hit his a pawn. I'm better, but it's not, not clearly like massively better. I think this is a mistake. He should have played 97. Again, trying to avoid exchanges of pieces, like con consciously avoiding exchanges of pieces here with white. He could have played 97 with the idea of activating this bishop out to c6, trading it off, maybe blockading the f5 square. So knight b6 is, is really inferior. Now he's seriously worse. Got the avalanche with f5 maybe. He's finally got the positional threat of, of bishop c6. Now a4 is not only against the knight on b6, but I've got bishop a3, which I was talking about <coughs> earlier. He can defend with queen e7, maybe. Looks like he just simply didn't have time to deal with it. We just win in exchange now, and uh, whoops, sorry. Um, anyway, game. I mean, if he doesn't blunder the exchange here, how bad is his position? He's pretty, pretty bad. But I thought this wasn't so bad. Knight on C to E7. I mean, you can defend this position for black. It's, it's, it's unpleasant. But um, you know, this this defense here is not so bad. White's clearly better, but uh, not winning. All right, I'm gonna play World Loser and Arsenal fan Ayesta. Those might be, like, our last games today. What's up, guys? What does Bishop H3 do? Um, I mean, sometimes it might be an idea. Le helping the lever F5 and pressuring E6. It also would, ex it would exchange, avoid the exchange of bishops on, on C6. I mean, in the event of him playing Bishop C6, I don't think that Bishop H3 would be totally ridiculous. I don't really want to trade bishops there. World loser is is quite strong, twenty one hundred. English, it's actually oh double fianchetto. Cool. Christmas tree. I didn't see a Christmas tree. So my my friend Zoltan Vargas says you're supposed to play D4. I did have a game in this um, week, months ago, a few months ago. I don't know this line of the hedgehog. I know the hedgehog, like, I know the lines of the hedgehog that I play with black, although I haven't been playing it lately. Um... Maybe we had this once with World Loser, I'm not sure. I had it against somebody, this variation. Like 10 years ago, I remember some Ironian games. There was It was kind of trending. I don't even, I guess Levon was black. I don't remember, maybe he was white. God. But anyway, I remember like 10 years ago, this was fairly fairly common at some, some Super GM games. I think I had a game here where black played like rook c8 
and d6 or something like that. Bishop h6 is definitely a move. Rook on f to d1 is definitely a move. I don't remember what the best is. Let's play bishop h6. And then I don't know where to put my rooks. Rook on c1 and d1. Or do we just like try to brutalize him here? Can we just brutalize him? Possible that World Loser, you know, would would wander into a bad situation because he played too fast. He is apt to do that. Focusing mostly on, on gaining a time advantage and putting pressure on his opponent on the clock. Um, World Loser is apt to make like very serious mistakes occasionally. Now he's got problems with the h7 pawn. So if I remove the defense of, of h7, don't I just have knight to d5 here? No, then he's going to play bishop h8, duh. But is that even good? Hmm. Okay, so I have take, take, knight, d5. And then I guess h5. If knight, d5 right away... Knight d5 right away, bishop h8, bishop f8, does that work? The real question is knight d5, bishop h8. <clears throat> bishop takes g7, king takes g7, knight knight d5, h5. And I can take on f6, he takes with the pawn. And then I play something like knight e4, and it's not clear at all that's even good for me. So, hmm. Running out of time. There's also knight e4, but I don't see how that's any better than the other lines. Um, knight d5, bishop h8, bishop f8. Can that possibly work? Looks unrealistic. You could even play h5 there. I mean, I just don't see a forced win for white. No forced wins. Knight d5, bishop h8. Then what? Knight takes f6 and knight takes h7 or something. Alright, whatever. I don't see a forced win. We'll just play ordinary moves, I guess. I 
I was a little concerned about g5. Maybe I would have sacked a piece there. We have a very small advantage now. <clears throat> Just have to play with increment. I didn't find anything. Knight e4 is too simple. I don't even understand what knight e4 is. How knight e4 is better than knight to d5. Well, I mean, I don't know if I should have force win and move 11, but I thought he made a mistake. It's not a variation where black can really afford to make any bad moves. <clears throat> Knight a5, queen d4 check, e5. I don't really like queen takes d6. <clears throat> I don't know what he's up to here. Queen c8 is a strange move. <clears throat> I thought he should simplify. Though he still can try it. Yeah, maybe it's not a strange move, actually. Check. Check or no check. Wade has a small edge, but he's got some threats there. He had an HE5 that move. I don't know if it was anything. Probably not. This is debate debatable situation here. He's kind of got himself into an awkward little spot. I love the move king f6. It's like insanely provocative. It's like we are making a little bit of progress. Maybe not enough.
he definitely should have should have played this taking on g6 I guess guys we have time for two more games after this this is why I like the three second increment though I would have been lost on time already with the two second increments so we can actually survive with three He, he had chances to break out, probably. That was not... Yeah, that was actually necessary to take on G8. That's me. Alright, man. I want to see the opening. Did he make a mistake or not? There's something weird about this move order that's not good for black. He's supposed to play h6 here. <clears throat> so my move is actually rare. Queen f4 is, is more common and probably stronger. They usually play h6 here, and then black is fine. Alright, good to know. But, after bishop h6, nobody played knight d5. There's only, no, there's zero games. Wow. I thought I was winning here, after knight d5, but I couldn't find it. I couldn't find my way to a win. All I can do apparently is just increase the pressure with rook on a to d1. I was looking for something more forcing. But it's not that clear. Alright, so I'm not supposed to play queen h4 there. I'm supposed to play queen f4. Okay, Arsenal fan Ayesta, last games for today. These guys are subscribers. Um. Made threats. Alright, last two games, guys. I'm going to take these two challenges because they are these guys are subscribers to the stream. Oops. <laughs> I'm moving too fast. Do we have something like knight c7? Uh, probably. It was cutting it close. Yeah, we probably have better rook endings with some sort of knight c7. If you want to play pretty safe. I think he also had much more precise defense. Even like relatively close to the end. Black's still probably holding on if he defends like God. I think he, he could have done knight c7 earlier. Shaken my knight off of... Off of... Uh, where was it? Where was my knight? On b5. Um... Let's play a Grunfeld defense. I almost never played the Grunfeld. <clears throat> I don't know what Arsenal fan does. You're welcome, we're loser man. We're loser man. So we both made mistakes. You're not supposed to allow Bishop H6, and I'm not supposed to play Queen H4 in the first place, it looks like. Queen F4. I think, you know, it's, it's problematic because I get confused with some lines of the... Uh, of the normal hedgehog with bishop e7. There's a similar variation with queen on f4. <clears throat> Arsenal fan now, I've been playing a lot of these type of positions with colors reversed. So now I feel the e3 variation is something I played with white. Now he's playing the Makaganov. Arsenal fan, where do you, where do you get off playing b4? You, you, like, secretly study openings or something? He pretends not to study openings, but then he plays this move. 
<clears throat> I guess we can um, play this style. Is this is this even good? I don't know. Don't ask me. I'm just making it up. Inducing a Slav type of situation, and then I don't know what would have happened if he plays knight g5. To be honest, here. I guess I go bishop g4 anyway, and it's just weird. It's just a weird situation. Instantaneously taking with the queen. Um, e5, pawn takes pawn. Doesn't quite look like it works. Like, c6 is bad for him. Okay. I mean, he can't play e4 here, which is vital. We've got a pretty clear method of creating counterplay, I hope. Hammering out the e5. Maybe he could try to move his queen again previously. I actually chose the Grunfeld as my first opening with black when I was a beginner. Not my first opening, I take it back. Um, first I played the Queen's Indian. And I didn't really understand, like you needed to learn the Nimzo too. And then I think I tried to play the Queen's Gambit Declined a little bit for like a few months. And then I s switched to the Grunfeld. And I played the Grunfeld until I was about 1900. For some reason I stopped and I started playing the King's Indian. Slav advanced variation. Makagana variation of the Grunfeld. But it's like a Slav now. Okay guys, one last game. I'm going to play with uh, Ayesta after this. And then we're going to close down the stream till Sunday night. I'm going to do a simul. For 20 players, 30, 30 simul. And um, I'm sorry, um, man who do come, but I'm obliged to play with the subscribers first. If I had more time, I would accept your challenge. So we're breaking through against the base of his pawn chain here. And his king is still in the center of the board. So that's relevant as well. But we need to be. We need to do this in a timely way. Um, if I just play routine, I mean, maybe he's okay here. Knight e4 isn't going to quite work, or is it? Yeah, knight e4 might be strong, because we're putting pressure on d4. But on the other hand, if he just, like, defends... Or I can check rook bishop e2 and then knight e4... Check, knight e, bishop e2, knight e4, knight takes e4, rook takes e4, threatening to win a pawn. Alright, let's go for it. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to decide, I, I might be missing something. I also have queen a5. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm a little bit ill. We've got forks on d2, if he tries anything. You're not going anywhere. For the moment. Without offering tithings to the, to the international master. I want a pawn, at least. If you expect to, to leave the building. Um, Castle Queenside, hey. That's something Clash Kid would do. It's definitely playable. I wouldn't put it past him. I mean, I guess I can just play f5. I mean, ultimately, yeah. 
He could castle queenside. My first plan was to take with the pawn, but then I was like, well, I'm actually not so sure I like this. This way I'm just staying on the pawn on, on d4. Hopefully, hopefully I pick that off. We also, okay, he did castle queenside now, but I mean, I think in this kind of situation, I could even sack an exchange or something like, we just have a good game. Queen a5 is interesting. Queen h4, eh. I guess he could just simply play knight d7 and develop your pieces without messing around. Maybe I have an attempt to win material with some weird sort of queen g5 check, rook f4, but that looks kind of awkward. I was thinking about just taking on b5 and then playing queen a5 and trying to be materialistic. Then his bishop goes back to d3. Could actually get quite strange. Sacking an exchange by leaving the rook on e4 is, is interesting. But maybe I just play takes on b5 and then straight up knight c6. He takes on c6. I take on c6. He plays something like rook e1. Um, <clears throat> There's no doubt black has a solid advantage here but I've got to find the right way. The problem is the threat of playing bishop d3 kicking me out. There's even like bishop h6 check followed by rook f4. It's kind of weird though. Take the focus off of the d4 pawn. Um, queen f6 going to an ending is nothing probably black would be possibly tiny bit better there okay I don't know I'm going to try to keep it keep it simple <clears throat> queen a5 he has oh, he just played that wow um, possible to sack the exchange, but I think it's, it's a little too much. I'm getting kind of low on time and it may be too generous to give up an exchange here. I'm just going to play it safe. I could also try to break with B6 and open up his king. The file, the plane, queen a5, I guess queen b3, I don't know, we're just slightly better. I also have queen g5 check and rook e8 if I need time to fight for the open file. I'm playing this pretty low risk. I didn't see anything spectacular for black. Look like queen a5, queen b3. Maybe we missed a tactic somewhere. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised. But my development is actually lagging. So stuff like b6 is nice, but it doesn't seem very very quick. Um looks a little slow. Queen a5 is a fork, but he has queen b3 defending both so I didn't see a follow-up really any kind of end game okay G g5 looks like a really strange move 
doesn't really do anything. Um, queen g5 check, just double rooks. Drawing, driving his queen to a good square. What's he up to with g4? I don't know. I mean, b6 is still interesting. What am I actually doing with this? I don't know. <clears throat> Just trying to connect my rooks, I guess. Wait actually seems okay here, though. I don't think I would prefer white, but... I should put my rook back on e4. Is bishop on b5 knocking out my knight? This is a very good move. I don't seem to have any counterplay. Maybe I could have played queen f6 there. Now he's opening up my king side. I'm not super happy about. He's like in slow motion. I could have tried to trade queens, but I dropped my my d5 pawn. My white is like a genius. Okay, I think my king is still safe though. It's going to be very hard for him to checkmate me with my bishop there on g7. Reminds me of the Petrov game the other day. Wait, wait, really, you know, deceptively played this like a genius. I mean, g4, like you can see the future or something. Like he knew, like he was going to play h4, h5 later on. It just looked like an irrelevant move to me three moves ago. Suddenly, things are not so clear at all. Wait, has attacking chances. <clears throat> He's getting low on time. I mean, I would, I would gladly, I would gladly sacrifice in exchange for a hamburger tomorrow. Um, now he's like boxing in my rook. All right, whatever. You had that. This looks very dangerous for white. It's like the understatement of the year. <laughs> oh no. Where did that come from? Was he even better at some moment? Apparently not. We always had it under control. But I think he's okay. You know, he wasn't he wasn't really worse. Um all right, last game guys, Ayesta. It's not safer to take with the H pawn.
Well, I think if I take with the F pawn, I'm just going to lose my H pawn. That's the problem. I mean, it may be safer, but I, it will be safer a pawn down. Um, so, no. Oddly enough, uh, I guess it didn't really matter. As far as safety goes, you just don't lose a pawn. It's really hard to checkmate one's king with the dragon bishop, or king's Indian bishop, defending. He needs time to play like bishop c1, like he did in the game, um, and set up some kind of weird bishop h6, queen h7 check, king f8, queen h8, you know, bishop h6, queen h8 mate type of ideas. Um, I am really sick of the Rosalimo. What are we going to play here? Let's try something different. Am I feeling okay? Um, I'm a little bit under the weather. Sparkle horse. But I am... Um, <clears throat> I've been worse. I'm just gonna like take as many vitamins as possible. Queenie two. Yeah, I guess this is this is like what you're supposed to do with white. <coughs> this is this is this is this is the line. better for white this variation it's um maybe possible to play without without queen e2 i don't know let's see d6 d4 c takes d knight takes d4 queen c7 is there some problem with that probably not it's a kind of nasty line, though. I wasn't sure if Ayesta would really know what he's doing or not, because it's not that common. White is actually playing in English in reverse. I mean, black is playing in English in reverse here. I don't know if I have time to play a6. I've got the bishop pair, it's basically an open Sicilian now, where I've got the bishop pair, but he's got a lead in development. Theoretically, this line is supposed to be better for white. But I'm wondering about if white has alternative plans. Can you sack a pawn here with castles? Certainly possible. Well, knight c3's got to be good. And then the question, actually... Yeah, that's a bit weird. Why Why does he have to play queen e2? I guess that I think I saw an old Jeroen Piquet game where he played, like, with queen takes d4. That might be another plan. So, knight c3, and then d6 or e6, and then you take with the queen on d4. Slightly more aggressive um, piece configuration for white. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's what I saw. But I'm suddenly a little bit worried about the position here. Oh no. Probably this is this is good for white. I wonder if I should have played 
a different move order. What can we do here? He has bishop g5, at least, with a slight edge. Um, by the way, last game today, guys. Camel Culture, what's up? We've given, I mean, we, we've gained the bishop pair, but um, I think rook e1. Rook e1 is interesting, but it's not the bone crushing move. He missed knight b5 here. I mean, I think it's like almost game over because of queen, queen b8, queen c4. And, um, but the best variation is knight b5, queen c6, knight d5. I don't think I have a defense there to that. I think that just ends it like right up, straight up. I'd have to play rook b8. Knight takes a7, just going down a pawn for nothing. So this this is far from clear now. I think that might have might have been just game over. Knight db5, followed by if queen c6, knight d5. I never seriously played this line. I mean, I know that I'm playing like I was white in some English. Now, the way he's played it is okay, but it doesn't win by force. Obviously, like winning by force is preferred, is the preferred approach. <clears throat> we'll look after the game. It looks like knight db5 and knight... The queen c4, knight d5 ideas. I didn't see a, a good move. Maybe I could play queen b6. Something weird. I mean, then you just go bishop e3. What benefit does, does queen b6 have? Could I do some crazy stuff like queen b6, bishop e3, queen c6, and now he can't do knight d5 because of takes? We'll have to look after the game. Maybe I can induce bishop e3 with queen b6 and not lose by force. No, actually, queen b6 again is queen c4. And that's good enough. He doesn't have to play bishop e3. I'm going to get forced to like move my king or rook or something, not to get forked on c7. And then it's like positionally lost for black. So. Something went wrong here. I mean, I know queen c7 is a risky line for black, but it shouldn't lose by force. It should just be like worse for black. So I guess I need to play a6 and move earlier. Um, instead of knight f6, I was thinking about playing a6 here. In retrospect, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much a lot better than, than anything else, so... We need to play a6 first. You know, we still got time to take the other ways. So, bishop e bishop takes f6, knight to d5. Pawn takes d5, pawn takes d5. Is that actually sound? It doesn't look sound. It's a little uncomfortable for me, but, I mean, I'm a piece up there. It looks like... Unless I'm mistaken... He's, um, I mean, I've defended some pretty nasty Skaveningen type positions. Once this guy from Mexico, uh, when I was really young, I was like, it was like 1989. This guy, um, what was his name? A Mexican I am who is totally Florentino Garmendez. He just ripped me apart. He, he did this kind of peace sacrifice. And uh, it was a disaster. But in this case, I'm just walking over to f8. And I don't think that white has enough <clears throat> for the piece here. He may have some lasting pressure. It's really hard for me to de defend my develop my pieces and defend. But if I play g6... Okay, this is just... Just lost. 
Best not to be greedy. I guess I lost. He lost the way. The way. Um, but I think you were winning, Ayesta. Let's check it out. You played a guy, a game against a German guy. <laughs> That's great, man. We gotta learn insults in every language. Why would he insult you like that? You didn't say anything provocative, did you, Bob? We're a little short of compensation here, Ayesta, but I'd like to take a look at the opening to see what happened. He does have a pawn for the piece. The king is out and about. Everything is secured. We've got our extra bishop tucked away on f8. Looks good. But I don't feel too proud of this game. I was hoping to trade pieces. He saw the writing on the wall. We can. I was thinking of playing g5, but I really shouldn't put my pawns on. I really shouldn't put my pawns in that color. We want our pawns in the opposite color. Come to daddy. All right. We've got um, Bishop D6. You're not coming out there, man. <laughs> that is that is dangerous. Uh, not a good idea. Ah, it's falling apart now. I guess he wants to get his money's worth <laughs> for this game. Let's get behind the passer. He's going to grab my a6 pawn. Doesn't matter. I'm in the I'm in the square of the pawn, right? B3, C6. No, that's a blunder. All right. I guess the It's going to be hard to stop it running out of ways. Well, juice box wizard, what's that? What the hell is that? Message is being held for view. Um, all right, man. Um, that kind of dragged that out a little bit. <laughs> Let's look for a second at the opening, though. I don't think this is, um, wow, nobody played d6 here. Nobody played this position at all. Yeah, so queen e2 is actually the best move according to Stockfish at first glance, but I'm not sure why it's necessary. As I said, I think knight c3, um, and then like d4 with takes with the queen is, um, is, is a dangerous line for white. So strangely enough, this looks like it's, it's a mistake to play d6. I should play a6 and then go about my business, not having to worry about knight b5. 
Now we have a problem. He gave me a second chance to play a6, which I probably should do. And now after d4, it looks like I have to play something weird like bishop e7, so as not to get busted. And then here apparently, queen d7 is the only move, not to walk into knight b5 like an idiot. No more games today, guys. Yeah, so... Knight db5. I think this is just winning for white. But I could be wrong. Okay, queen c6, I'm not seeing it. I thought knight d5 was curtains. Say what? I mean, obviously I can play king d8. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. It's bad. You know, I mean, if I have to do this, or I think I would, I don't know whether I would prefer like rook b8. This is bad news. You are lost in this position with black. There's no question. The computer is talking about bishop d7. What the heck? <clears throat> um, surprisingly, that's better than king d8. Knight check. Here we go. King d8 anyway. And then knight takes f6. Knight takes a8. Is this so bad? Wow, this is ridiculous. The engine thinks this is okay for black. Wow, nice try. So we can try to trap the knight on... We can try to trap the knight on a8. Good to know if I ever, like an idiot, walk into this position again. That's our best hope. <laughs> Hopefully this will never happen again. Anyway, guys, thanks for the stream. No, thanks to me for the stream. Thanks, you guys, for watching. We will be back on Sunday with a simul uh, at 6.30 p.m. Central European time for 20 players. It was fun. Experimental variation. Be very careful if you play Queen C7 against the Rosalimo guys. I'll be back on Sunday. Thanks for, for watching. And um, Soltigo, thanks for being our moderator today. Thanks for subscribing. Please subscribe and um, support the stream via PayPal. Any donations will now be put forward to a new mouse since I'm making weird moves by accident. Didn't happen today, but could could happen. Um, also, check out my videos on YouTube, video chess training on YouTube, slowly but surely growing. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.